down right now. Hello and welcome to coverage of Grand Prix Vancouver. I'm Marshall Cycliff in the booth with Randy Bueller, and we're all set for the semis. Randy, uh, GCB, that's Gabe Carlton Barnes. You see him on the left-hand side of your screen there. He's playing against Jeremy Dezani. Gabe just played what had to be a mentally exhausting quarterfinal match against uh, Eric Severson. Well, here's the thing, though. It ended with a big surge of adrenaline. Okay, you like, think he's just riding the wave? It ended with him taking a lap of the room, exchanging high fives. He got a bathroom break. He got enough time to sort of catch his breath. I think if this one goes long, he's going to be destroyed mentally. Okay. But right now, I think the adrenaline's probably coursing plenty well enough to keep him sharp. All right, so we'll see now. His opponent, Jeremy Dezani, you'll know him. Player of the year. And he's um, he's got a reckless cohort to start things off. Let's see if GCB has an answer, and in fact he does. And this is actually really bad for Jeremy uh -oh. if he doesn't find a, an uh -oh. ally now. Must attack. He didn't get all the allies he wanted. He has some darky non-allies in his deck. Uh, I think this is an active flame seeker, yeah, which it would, would fit the bill. Okay. So he's his, his cohort is safe from uh, <laughs> from running right into that Nirkana assassin. But no attacks, right? So GCB cl clearly is going to be the control player in this matchup as Jeremy Dizani is going to look to be the aggressor with his red-white allies deck. And Gabe, we, we got a chance, to, if, if you're on the stream with us <laughs> live here, to see pretty much every All card out of this deck. <laughs> yeah, he had three left when he won the game. game Here's Transgress awesome. the Mine. Let's see if what it hits. Jeremy, of course, comes from France. Gabe, he's lived in... Uh, Various cities around the United States. He settled in Portland, Oregon, so mm -hmm. not too far from here. It's about six, six hours, hours or yeah. so. Yeah. I wonder if he drove or flew. Or I flew. would not be surprised at all if he if he drove up with a right with a cohort. Right with the crew, the draft crew. Yeah. You know, I I saw one of them, Seamus. He he's done some writing for us, and he uh, he said he put <laughs> he just aged two years watching <laughs> that quarterfinal <laughs> match. Yeah, I can't get that can't get that game out of my head. I mean, it was long and it was exhausting, but it was awesome. It was great. Uh, it was one of the better limited games I've ever seen. I mean, it was definitely on the top ten. I was sitting down there in the feature match here, yeah. just sort of checking it out. Nice. And it was incredible. One of the swingiest games, too. Oh, I've, yeah. ne I've never thought, all right, 90% are here. And then all of a sudden. 90% the other way. It swung three times. It did. It had full, like, this game's over, right? Like, people in the yes. chat were like, GG. See you next time, whatever. And that that happened three different times. It was insane. Brian David Marshall described it as the most GCB game possible. The GCB is? Yes, the GCB is. <laughs> it was that. Yeah. I've known Gabe for a while. You know, he he does come up to the Seattle area to play in our tournaments and sure. well to win them, to be honest. <laughs> and uh, I certainly know his style. I've also had him on my podcast, so. Nice. I mean, he's an excellent player. Oh, yeah. He's got 12 PT Day 2s. No, you know, no top 8s at the mm -hmm. Pro Tour, but a dozen Day 2s is it's not a small number. In the meantime, it looks like Dazani's going to activate his Flame Seeker and then follow that up with Valakut Predator. Yeah. He did Get rid of a mountain in that sequence, but you can see in his hand from this angle. One he's more. He's got to back up. Yeah. Back to Gabe. Those of you who watch Grand Prix coverage will also recognize Gabe. He he's done some stints in the booth with us here as a commentator. Mm -hmm. So no land here for Gabe Carlton Barnes. And this could start to catch up with them here. Well, yeah, we'll see what kind of trick he's got for yeah, the Yeah, we know what he has here. He's got a Gideon's Reproach. Kay. And that works. Yep. 
There is a world where he takes a lot of damage that turn anyway, but it wasn't this one. And it's going to be allied reinforcements as a follow-up for Dazani. And, you know, I got to say that while Dazani's doing a reasonable job of building out his board, that Nurkana assassin is putting in overtime here. Yes. And there's land number four for Gabe. <laughs> two threes Another for Another two three. Warden of Geometries now for Gabe Carlton Barnes, and he... Bunch of two twos on one side, bunch of two threes on the other. I know which side I like. <laughs> Shrugs and ships the turn back. Yeah, it's the three two is actually the most powerful thing going on here, probably. Dizani's just able to f go through his deck and find the good stuff. That's right. He does have some good stuff. You said he, y you got the vibe that he uh, wasn't super happy with how the yeah, deck came we, together? Yeah, we watched or? his deck, and mm -hmm. he really wanted to be black. He took a couple of vampire envoys really, really early. Uh, he also passed the Tazri that uh, got GCB into white. So his white Ooh. was a little dry in pack two because he, he chose to take press into service over Tazri, first pick, first pack. But then wound up in white anyway. So, yeah, it, he just didn't have as many looks at uh, good cards as he might have wanted. And so, you know, he's got Valakut Predator. He's got, uh, you know, Felidar Cub. He's got Kozilek Sentinel in his red-white allies deck. You know, these are all playable cards, but they're not powerful or synergistic no, cards. Not. That's right. And really these are these type of decks do rely on that. You know, I mean the, the synergies are what makes these cheap creature decks work cuz right. otherwise you just get out class once turn 4, turn 5, turn 6 starts coming along. Well, reckless cohort choosing to go into battle. <laughs> GCB's like, "All right, I don't want to know what it is." Find out later when I have mana untapped, what you know, trick you're up to. Yeah, and it's kind of interesting for GCB because even though both creatures look kind of eh on his board, one's an ally, which is going to... He, he is playing a cohort deck in many ways, so he yep. needs that ally. And then the Warden of Geometries gives him mana, and he needs that too after having missed a land drop. So he'd rather just take the two damage rather than let one of his creatures die to a combat trick of some sort and uh, keep things moving forward here as far as his board state goes. It's good resource management by GCB here. This is a big turn for him. It is. Look at Jeremy's board. It is really big. There's a Zada's Commando now as well on the board for uh, for Jeremy. <laughs> All right. Shoulder to shoulder is going to draw Gabe a card and also get a couple of counters on both of his creatures, which, you know, I mean, they were good blockers before. Now they can block anything that Jeremy throws up them as far as uh, the board state goes currently. Is there a follow-up play here for Gabe? Maybe a land drop? He also could consider attacking with the Warden of Geometries here. Does have Vigilance. Yeah, he decides not to. There is a risk level with it. Yep. I mean, Jeremy telegraphed that he has a combat trick last turn, and there's a first striking untapped blocker. Exactly. So also, Gideon's scary. approach is a thing, so yeah. It's tempting to, to, to just sort of fall into the autopilot mode of like, well, it has to, you know, it's, it's a free roll, I'll just attack, but I, I like the no attack there from Gabe. Yeah, he is getting a lot of value out of that uh, Flame Seeker. It has discarded three or four lands. Mm -hmm. Kept his kept his hand pretty spell dense here. There's only one land left in it. That's a McKinney Aeronaut, which can get in, but not well. No attack. Still just one. Yeah, no attack here. I Gabe looks like he has stabilized. Now, the engines that he can get running here to help propel him into the late game are mainly life gain engines with Undo War Cleric. And he can also find... Well, he just shoulder to shoulder it again, Randy. <laughs> I don't think that's really what he wants, so he's going to do it. He's also got... Um, let's see what he hits. All right, he plays a Swamp here. I think he's still just on the go plan. So from the fact that Jeremy chose not to attack once those creatures became three force, I think that means his trick was Searing Light. I think the stream might be down. We'll be if if, if you're still with us, we're just going to keep commentating along, and if we're not, then uh, we'll be back as as soon as humanly possible. Yeah. Yeah, Dizani going wide.
Okay, so let's just uh, keep trucking along. Our, our stream's currently down, but it's going to be back up in just a minute. But as far as this goes, Randy, <laughs> we can just keep. Those of you watching the recording later. Yeah. Right? Hello there, YouTube viewer. <laughs> so, so yeah. Uh, basically, Gabe is looking to set up these late game engines and try to overpower Dazani while Dazani's trying to get Gabe dead before he gets a chance to actually do that. And right now, Gabe has done a, a good job of of holding back here. You know, and, and he's going to look for a Malakir Soothsayer and an Undo War Cleric at some point to gain him life and draw him cards and push him over the top in the late game. It's Felidar Cub and is it Sidemaster? What's the other one? Oh, no, it's one uh, It's an Offa Protector. Yeah, Protector. Yeah, yeah. So he's got... And welcome back, by the way, those of you who are joining us live. Sorry about the... Uh, the technical difficulty, but we're glad to have you back. In the meantime, uh, all you missed was Jeremy Dizani developing his board even further with, I gotta say, kind of mediocre creatures here, right? That's what his deck is. Yeah, nothing great. And Gabe fired off another shoulder to shoulder, so that's why he's got two counters on there. And here's a Chain Mage. This is actually more of his finisher rather than these mid-game engines or late-game engines that I was referring to earlier with the Malakir Soothsayer and the Andu War Cleric, but he'll take it. Doesn't look great here, though. You know, tra trading off your uh, your chain mage for a random two two is not great. It will hold that off a protector. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> take that. It's the pair of four fives that's really holding the board down. Totally. Not as commandos hoping to soften gave up enough that an alpha strike can get around those four fives. But I mean, at this point, Jeremy basically loses cre two creatures every time he attacks. You gotta have a lot more creatures than your opponent when they're on fifteen, and that's true. Notice if uh, if Jeremy has a Spark Mage's Gambit in his deck by chance, Randy. Oh, that's a great question. How good would that be here? Yeah, it would be a major blowout. Probably a game-winning play. Not that turn immediately, but the next one. Yes. He yes, does. he does. He drafted one, and it's in the main deck. Oh. That is business if he can find that. And remember, he's churned through a lot yeah. of his deck here. Oh, it's, yeah. it's not like he's just drawing one card a turn. He's discarding all the lands almost. And Dazani's now doing combat math here. Ah, there's the Searing Light. When he attacked into the two threes, he was sitting on Searing Light, and then suddenly they were three fours, <laughs> and he was a lot less interested a little in attacking into them. Ah, it all makes sense. We knew he had something back then. Yeah, no, I had when he stopped attacking, I was looking at his deck list and saw that he had Searing Light and suspected that might be it. Of course, the stream went down, so no way to verify that. I, I, I promise I said this. <laughs> I believe you. I also heard you say it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, another allied reinforcements here. Yep. And Jeremy Dazani still hasn't found a place to attack, though I don't expect that to last for much longer. At some point, I think he's going to start sacrificing random tutus and such to just get in huge chunks of damage. Yeah, this he's starting to be wide enough that that's worth it. He's yeah. really hoping for Spark Ooh, Mages. Oh, there's the Soothsayer, though. Yeah, we, Spark Mage's Gambit is now plan A. Yeah, we were just talking about this as, as Gabe's late game plan. The only other piece of the puzzle that could really set him up is an Undo War Cleric. But, yep. heck, he'll take a 4-4 four, four blocker plus the ability to start drawing right. cards later. All right, that's kind of interesting. It was an Expedition Raptor off the top. I suppose it doesn't quite do enough here, no. though. The four fives are still just going to be bigger than anything, even with the counters well, on it. Is that an Aeronaut, though? He did have one earlier. It's probably in the pile somewhere. Yeah, he's up to, like, four power worth of Flyers, right? If he plays Raptor. That would give him four power worth of Flyers, absolutely. And, and a huge attack here on the ground could... You know, maybe make uh, Gabe block with the Chain Mage and trade. I don't know. It, th that 4-4 may have swung it back in the other direction. And what we're yep. watching here is Dazani figured that exact thing out. He says, okay, play this, do that. How would you block if now I attacked? What? And this is him what counting. What would I get through? Do you get Stasis Snare in his hand? Oh, is that what he has? I think so. Oh, you're totally correct. He just sort of sneaks it <laughs> in under that, <laughs> Cover those that counters, up. and that is going to go away. That's a 
big play for Dazani. And what you see is him setting up exactly what he thinks the blocks are going to look like. And I was wondering why he only had three when there were four yeah, creatures. Yeah. Now it makes sense. Is this lethal? Let's see. Block, block, block. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen. That's lethal, right? Is it really? Maybe he can block something for two on the ground and only get in for one in the air, but it's Always close. Dazani offering up the blocks that will give him lethal? <laughs> that actually could be the case, too. It is exactly 13 that Dazani claims he's getting through with. Um. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's trying to get GCB to block the 1-4 instead of a 2-power guy. If GCP blocks, doesn't block the 1-4, you let the 1-power guy through. Taking 13 is a lot worse than taking 12. Yes. Nice try, Jeremy. Though I, I got to say, I think this game plan is going to work for Dasani. Sure, his little ruse won't won't work. but Yeah, I mean, he'll lose some creatures here, but then next turn's Alpha Strike probably is, is yeah, lethal. Yeah, I mean, he he's going to put Gabe to one. Right. And he should have more creatures still than Gabe after and, and this And among sequence. other things, there's an Aeronaut. Yeah, a lethal Aeronaut as well. So I like this attack from... Dizani. All right, this is uh, uh, on the way out. Take two. CB's going to deal two. Yeah. Not going to draw a card. And yeah, go to one, Gabe Carlton Barnes. Yeah, it looks like Jeremy got wide enough. He did. One stasis snare, cleared one blocker. 12 got through. Now there's only two blockers, and there's seven creatures on Jeremy's side. We saw kind of a pronounced top deck there from Gabe. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if there's a card in his deck here. I'm assuming that players have been given deck lists as well, so he can. Mm -hmm. They've been given the pool. They don't know the list, ah. but they know what cards were drafted. Yeah, I think I think game one's going to Dizani here pretty cleanly. Now we do have another match going, by the way, as well. Remember, this is only our, our first semifinal. We're running them side by side. We've got uh, Adam Jansen. He advanced uh, past. Who did he play? He played against Alan Ellen Sun. Ellen Sun in the quarters and defeated him. And Nick yeah, Slynn defeated. Yeah, th so that's going to go game one to Dizani. And Nick Slynn defeated uh, Chris Hewitt. So Nick is also into the semis, and he's playing against Adam right now, in fact. Did we get a game one result for that? I haven't seen one come across our chat yet. Okay, th uh, it looks like they just finished their like game Brian as Brian well, David Marshall is walking over okay. as if on cue. What's going on in the feature match area, Brian? What's up? What's up, Coach? Yeah, we're going to get Brian's mic turned on. So it looks like uh, Adam Jansen and... You, you were over there in the feature match I was area, over there, right? yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Adam Jansen and uh, Slim, they're going to game three. Wh what? Yeah. Oh. They're going to game Th three. Wow, okay. Adam Th that game Adam didn't seem long. Adam the one Jansen we won a very, very quick game one. Red-blue, again, just has a lot of really cheap uh, creatures, a lot of surge cards, is really able to add a lot of removal. Okay. But, uh, but Slim came out with just, you know, big beaters. And uh, sowed havoc everywhere. Can you give us a sense for the the tone down there in the feature match area? Or is it is it quiet and serious, or are they joking <laughs> around? Or it, it's pretty quiet and serious. And there's a lot of really concerned teammates for all four players, mm. just really hovering. just craning <laughs> their necks. Like the only sound you can hear are people like cricking their necks to try to get an angle around a camera or around a judge or something to see what's going on. A lot of very very concerned people. You can actually see him on our shot here yeah. as we see Dizani. There's a there's part of the group behind him on the left there of of supporters for a lot of the players in the feature match yeah. and teammates. That, that's you know. the the person right there behind the judge is Raf Levy. Of sure. course, the Hall of Famer rooting on his teammate, Jeremy Dizani. And we know Gabe has his uh, draft PDX teammates up here. Yeah. Uh, Are they know, looking I at their watches wondering what time they get home <laughs> Monday morning? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they, they, they've drafted with Gabe, <laughs> you know, on a work night multiple times. They know what time they get home. All right. <laughs> Is Gabe the Rashad of their group? Gabe, he wins more than Rashad. Oh, shots fired. Jeez. <laughs> they just took the head. Brian took his headset off and is now <laughs> fleeing the feet, the uh, the coverage area. All right. Well, let's get back to business gonna be doing here. Play by play on the commentary wars. No kidding. All right. So, getting back to business here, though. Gabe Carlton Barnes finds himself down a game to the Pro Tour champion, former Player of the Year Jeremy Dizani here. You know, it's his tenth Grand Prix top eight already. 
you know, he just tore it up. He really did. That player of the year year, it was he just every was GP. He every was. GP in Europe, he was there. Yep. He ten, won. 10 does surprise me, though. Yeah, 10's a big number. You would have guessed like five or six, yeah. right? Maybe seven? I would have guessed five or six. Yeah. That, that would have been. And, and that would have, I kind of felt like that would have been generous. He's only been around for like three years. Yeah, it's only been two, two three years that he's really been on the, on the pro scene. But that, that, he had an unbelievable year. Yeah. He has two wins coming in, nine top eights coming in. The one Pro Tour top eight, which is the win at Pro Tour Theros. GCB's first GP top eight. That one surprised me a little bit. Many times. This is his first G GP top eight? Yeah, no, as many times as he's qualified for the Pro Tour, as many ways as he's qualified for the Pro Tour. That I guess they've me. all been PTQs. Yes, he it's is really the master of a PTQ. Can I got to say, though, I mean, look at him. He is ready to fight, getting all warmed up, getting that neck loose. He's ready to rumble. And I'll tell you, the, you know, the quarterfinal match that, that you and Rich commented commentated between uh between gcb and eric severson it was incredible mm -hmm. and i gotta say both players played with a lot of composure because yeah. those games were insane there was a lot of things to process and i was really impressed by both of them yeah the way severson almost won that last game was i thought great like he made this really awkward attack because he kind of had to because he knew things were going to get worse and like managed to get put enough pressure on that GCB had to trade off a soothsayer, which is how Severson was able to climb all the way back into the game, almost win, almost deck him. Rich described it as one of the best comebacks he'd ever seen, and I think it was actually two or three of the best comebacks we've yeah, ever seen. Yeah, all in one game. That was crazy. Um, so yeah, on our on our side match, just for those of you that had missed it, it it's one game apiece. Yeah, yeah, they're going to game three. Yeah, between Jan uh, Jansen and Slim, so they're they're already going to three. Mm -hmm. They're they're off to the right. They had two games done before this one finished its first, and that game was pretty quick. It, it, it wasn't a particularly slow game. Normal, I would call it. Neither of these players plays at a blistering pace. That All right, true. here's game three, off to the races. All right, we get a chance to check in on this. And Adam Jansen, the captain of Hot Sauce Games. Yep. In his second GP Top 8, also Top 8 in Detroit. Has a Pro Tour Top 16 on his credit from... Uh, Pro Tour comms. Nick Slind is actually from, from Washington, where you and I both live, yep. Andy. But I'm, I'm not as familiar with Nick. Uh, he lives in Spokane, which is about yeah. six hours away from Seattle on the other side of the state. But he's kind of the main limited guy at his, at his area out there, is what I'm told. He's the man. He's the guy. Yeah, 35-year-old software engineer from Spokane. That's... I thought you might have uh, misread GCB's. Yeah. It's very, it's very no, similar. GCB's 36, <laughs> totally different. <laughs> and he's a software engineer from Portland. He writes in a software developer, but same thing. Fair. Looks like this will be Nick's first Pro Tour. List his previous accomplishment as a top 64 at GP Tacoma. So, yeah, local ringer. I don't know what it is about Vancouver. All the local ringers just, you know... Send all the pros home without more top eights. Hall of Famers losing in the last round. Local ringers claiming all the top eight spots. All right, why don't we jump back over to the first match? We're going to let this one go, but I, I got to keep up on the GCB versus Jeremy Dazani. We will keep you updated as to how this one goes, though. As this one is underway, you can see the Hedron Crawler there from Gabe Carlton Barnes getting him off to a man advantage that he did not enjoy in the first game. True. He's got a core sky climber to start things off. Yeah, this is a very different start. Yeah, no two drop from Dizani. And you remember GCB stumbled on mana last game. Took him away. He yeah. went to three, but it took him a while to find four and really start deploying anything. Yeah, he had to fire off two shoulder to shoulders just to try to find mana. It also helped uh, you know, bolster his board, but all right, so the three drop of choice for Dizani. Valak and Predator passes a turn back. Gabe's going to crack his Evolving Wilds and reveal that, no, he's not splashing. <laughs> he's just got another Planes here.
Attack. Are we going to see an unnatural endurance here? Yeah, yep. you can see that Dazani knew it was coming and Gabe just sort of casually flicked it into his graveyard there. But a nice trade. He traded one mana for three there and didn't really do much else with his turn. Yep. Did Gabe Mulligan? It feels like he did, right? He's, he's already down to just a few cards in hand. Yeah, these Alec reinforcements are so good. Yeah, that card. that card's very solid. I mean, it's not Relief Captain, but it is a very good white uncommon. And it looks like he's going to go ahead and give flying. He drew an Undo War Cleric for his turn, so he still gets to add to his board anyway. Sure. And Gabe's kind of taking the offensive here. He's not going to trade off for one of these tokens, so he may as well get in for three damage, as he's thinking. Oh, that wanted to be a land there for Dazani. He's got an Expedition Raptor, and if he would have it, it was a Relief Captain, though, right? I didn't see. I'm pretty sure it wasn't <laughs> was a land, it? but it was a relief captain. I'm going to assume it wasn't if he's attacking. I mean, you would. Don't you want a third creature first? I, I guess so. What is, it, what is his other option? Oh. <laughs> two more tutus. <laughs> he's just all, un yep. all white uncommons and, and, all the time. And you're totally right, Randy. That was a relief captain. So now he's in full business mode. This is going to be really tough for Gabe to get out of. He's missing land drops. He just hasn't done anything very powerful here. Doesn't and even have a three toughness blocker this no. time around. And Jeremy has. And that's going to get out class next turn anyway. Right, right. Even two threes, no, not going to be good enough when Relief Captain hits the table. Yeah, and if he hits a land, he may even just play the Raptor. It just depends on how things pan out. But either sure. way, Dizani's going to be in full-on driver's mode here. And uh, I don't know that Gabe even has a card in his no, deck to get him back. he needs a sweeper. Yeah, he's got to have a planar outburst, and, and he doesn't have one. The minus two, minus two thing was floating around the draft. I don't know where it landed. Mm. I forget the name of the card. That was uh, Flame Tendrils, you mean? The yeah, yeah. The new one? Yeah, Yeah, I actually thought Dizani should have de-drafted it. All right, now this is kind of interesting. Here's General Tazri. Okay. That's how so we got into this mess in the first place. Jeremy creating a white drafter by passing it to GCB. Were they sitting right next to each other in the draft? Uh, one player in between. One player in between. So I guess must have taken the other red card out of that pack. <laughs> I don't. I'm not in the path <laughs> habit of passing General Tazri too often. Uh, she's Fair. great. Get Narcana Assassin. Soothsayer's the the best get. I don't know if that's in hand or if GCB just knows he doesn't really have time. An interesting grab there, the assassin. That's one of his worst cards. Just a mediocre two three. I mean, it's solid against a bunch of two twos. Yeah, yeah. He he's gonna be he he does need it here. What he doesn't know. Fifth land did come off the top for Dazani, so he's got his choice of support cards. Yeah, so the options here apparently are do not involve dumping plus one plus one counters onto his creatures. He must have a, a combat trick of some sort to get over General Tazri. Because, look, Gabe would prefer to not play into them, but he's just not at that luxury now. This is just way too much damage, so he's going right. to have to do some sort of block. Right. Get away with maybe only putting Tazri out. He could. He could get away with that. He decides to go ahead and just go block block. Sure strike. Sure strike, sure. Get in for four. Kill Tazri. Trade, trade there. Four damage. Two of it does come back with the cleric. Both the allies are dead, though. Both the ally friends. That's right. That means that cleric is turned off. Now, we do know, of course, that he's got the assassin in hand. But Jeremy's really just biding his time here and not, you know, kind of not going for the throat. Eldrazi aggressor. Yeah. For him. Mediocre. Doesn't really do much in his deck. But, eh, he needed a three drop. Yeah, it's a body. Yeah. And you know Picks what it holds quite nicely? Plus one, plus one counters. Ding. Does he already have the Soothsayer? Yeah, okay. okay. That, that explains, explains that, yeah. He had the mana for it when he played Tazri because they have the same cost. So it was kind of like, oh, why are you getting a 2-3? Oh, right. You've already got your best ally in hand. The comeback kid here, Gabe Carlton Barnes. It's true. I, I mean, I don't think he can... We didn't think he could I in the quarterfinals either. either. And he sure did. <laughs> Remember, Gabe does not have a big sweeper. I, 
would assume that Jeremy's going to go for kind of the one-two punch here and probably go for the Raptor first and then go for the Relief Captain after because he can put a counter on the Raptor with it, which just yeah. creates a, a bigger flyer for in case things go awry. That makes sense to me as well. Yeah, the Soothsayer, though, does a great job here. 4-4 four, four, big. I, don't, I think Jeremy's just going to pass. Sure. Does gain two life. Okay, back up to sixteen for Gabe. He's not gonna like what he sees next turn. He's got looks like a pair of lands in that Nirkana assassin in his hand here. All right, Nirkana assassin. Gabe Carlton Barnes passes the turn back. He's got his engine set up. He can draw cards or gain life as he sees fit. The question is. Can Jeremy Dazani enable support here enough to smash Gabe Carlton Barnes' board and then eventually him? Gabe's just hanging on by a thread here. He doesn't quite know it yet. <laughs> I'm sure he has a sense for it, though. Drew an Atha Protector, but he's just going to go for the uh, Relief Captain here. Boom. God, the sequence is nasty. Expedition Raptor into Relief Captain with this board. And he'll put one on the Raptor as well. So now he's got a 4-4, four, four, a 4-5, four, and a 3-3 three, three flyer. And he's going to get in with all of his big creatures. You know, Gabe can take a hit here. Does he's not it, really have good blocks. He kind of does. Like, the Narcana Assassin can get Death That's Touch. That's right. On command, he can gain life. So he can trade Assassin for either of the ground creatures. That's right. So probably the Eldrazi Aggressor, since it's a little bigger. That would have him taking seven, but also gaining two of it back. So he would only take five in this exchange, dropping him down to 11. Mm, sounds like it's a play. I, you know, I think he's got to do it. It still leaves him with the engine up as well with two allies for either the Soothsayer or the, the War Cleric, depending on if he needs to gain life or draw cards and, and how he sees that. Mm -hmm. Not this turn, but next turn. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see that be the play here. Okay, so Gabe makes the block. Four damage, he's going to activate. Gain two life. That's going to give death touch. And so, yeah, down to 11. Okay, that could have gone worse for Gabe. Is Jeremy just going to play? I think he just can go land off a protector here if he wants. That's exactly what he does. And he is out of gas. So, Gabe needs some action and quickly. All right, let's let him take a draw step. BDM, you were down in the feature match area watching our other match. What's going on? We have a finalist waiting for the winner of this semifinal match. It is Adam Jansen. Adam Jansen from wow. Hot Sauce Games is can in I, the finals. Can I interest you in casting Slip Through Space and Brutal Expulsion on a turn where Jory and Ruin Diver is in play? <laughs> I'm in for that. <laughs> okay, I thought you might be. Wow. Adam Jansen in to the finals. Now, he is going to be awaiting his opponent here. And boy, do we have a, a tough game here. Really intense match between Jeremy Dizani and Gabe Carlton Barnes. Gabe's behind. He's been behind this whole game. And he has Ondu rising. Is of course he does. Is that going to get the job done here? Can he afford to attack is his first question, and if so, with what? If not, yeah, he, he didn't attack. He could not afford to attack. He's just going to have to pass a turn back here and leave another 4-4 four, four up to probably trade with the token. So this game has now come down to, at least on the board, that Raptor. This has been a great game. Is it just... 
is it just Gabe? Does he just make these great intense games happen? <laughs> I, I Because the way it looks like this flushes out right now is that if Jeremy, let's just say he attacked with everything, Gabe would survive quite cleanly, be able to eat a few creatures, and even gain some life here. So these are the good attacks that Jeremy has, the 4-4 four, four and the 3-3 three, three flyer. If he attacks here, Gabe's likely to trade the planes for the 4-4 four, four on the ground and take three in the air. And then he has to start making the tough decisions about, do I lose a life and draw a card? Or do I just gain two life, which really mitigates the threat in the air in a really clean way? He's going to gain two, uh, draw a card first, it looks like. Information. Yeah, he wants to know first. So he's made that decision already. He knows that in order to do this, he needs to, to draw a bunch of cards. And look, he's actually going to chump block here. Mm -hmm. Wants to keep his 4-4. Four, four. I mean, that's the reason the other creatures aren't going... Yeah, in. you know, if he drew a card like shoulder to shoulder here, then he could get that planes up to 5-5 five five where it's really holding back everything, where the upside of keeping the Hedron Crawler is not nearly as high. But remember, Gabe's down to 7 and facing a 3-3 three, three flyer. Pass. It's not going to take much for Dizani. We saw in the first game that Gabe had a similar scenario where he was sort of barely hanging on, and mm -hmm. then one stasis snare just blew it out of the water. Yep. And Gabe's in a similar spot here. There's no rummaging going on for Dizani, though. That's a big difference. That is a huge difference. You're right. And it looks like Dizani's had enough waiting around. He's sending everything into the red zone here. In. This is going to force Gabe to gain the two life after he makes his blocks. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He would be dead in this scenario. Uh, dead doesn't sound good. Right? Even, even with the life gain. Now, he does have one card in hand, and he can make different blocks if he wants. Yeah, that block keeps everything alive. So that's the block he wants to be able to exactly. make. Exactly. That's the block he wants. Doesn't work unless he has a trick. Trade there. Gobble that up. Block that. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. This works. This has him at two. What is that card in his hand? He's locked these in his blocks. He's going to gain two life to go up to nine and keep himself alive. He is taking seven damage in this sequence as it sits. He could have dazzling, dazzling light, dazzling reflection, dazzling reflection. Sorry, dazzling reflection as a com as a combat trick that actually just kills the four four here. Yeah, that was. Big time. It's a solid trick. Oh, my goodness. And there's an Andu Great Horn, and this could be it yeah, for Gabe Carlton body. Barnes. He's just got a couple of lands, extends the hand, and Jeremy Dizani moves to the finals. Welcome back to the finals, Jeremy Dizani. Great Indeed. run by Gabe Carlton Barnes. We will see him in Madrid. Madrid. Congratulations to him on a great run. I know he's got a lot of fans out there, and uh, fans of Jeremy Dizani have a lot to smile about here as he is – Heading into the finals where Adam Jansen awaits. We've got a nice little finals lined up for you guys yep. here. Adam plays a ton of GPs, and uh, it's going to be really fun. That's going to do it, though, for the semifinals here from Vancouver.
Hey there, welcome back to the booth here at Grand Prix of Vancouver. That's Randy Bueller. I'm Marcel Sutcliffe. And uh, I got to say, man, the t intensity has ratcheted up pretty significantly once bit. we hit the top eight. Now, that's normal, right? We're, yeah. we're used to that. But I got to say, this one's even a little bit above normal. For